So I'm um, very pleased to be here talking to Terry Fitzgerald, who's speaking from Sydney today. Um, so welcome and thank you, uh, Terry. <laughs> okay, so um, Terry's going to be uh, telling us a little bit about his ideas on Alexander Technique teacher education. Uh, but I thought not everybody will know know you. So maybe you could just say a little bit about yourself, you know, where you trained and um, some, something about what you've what you've done with the Alexander Technique over the years. Sure. Um, I was originally a civil engineer and um, when I was 25 or so, I decided to do the uh, leave home scenario, go to London, as we often did in those days, working holiday sort of thing. And the only book I took with me was Dr. Barlow's The Alexander Principle, um, little knowing that I'd end up you know, having a conversation like this right down the track. The reason I took that was I'd read it, this was 1974, I'm talking about, and I'd read it the year before, just after it had been published. In fact, I read it twice because it resonated with what I was interested in uh, sort of socially then was ballroom dancing. One of the things I enjoyed about dancing at that point was that it, I was using my mind to tell my body what to do, um, as you do. And, um, and I'd always been a klutz of sorts of all, all the way through school and university. And uh, so, the, Discovering ballroom dancing was the first time I'd actually realised I, I had a really had a body. Um, and uh, so when I saw Dr. Barlow's book reviewed in the Sunday paper uh, in 73, it just sort of rang a bell. And uh, there was a teacher in Sydney, but I didn't know that, that at the time. So I read the book assiduously and misinterpreted it completely, of course. <laughs> um, but it was enough to get me stimulated about um, well, when the time came to go to London to take that book and see where it might take me. So I did that in April 74, settled into London, got a job with, a, with an engineering consultancy, started having dancing lessons with a teacher that had been recommended to me in London and uh, basically got into living in London. Um, and then once I got settled, I contacted Stat Office. Um, Stephanie Langley at the time was running it at the Barlas for practice up at Royal Albert Hall somewhere. somewhere. Um, and so I got a list of teachers and the one who was closest to where I was working at the time, which was near Westminster, was Patrick McDonald. So he was just a name on a list. I didn't have a clue that he, I didn't know that he was have a teacher training program. So I started having some introductory lessons with him, fell in love with the, the idea and then discovered that he had a teacher training program. And by this stage too, I was also interested in becoming a dancing teacher. So this Gwyneth Walsh, who I was having lessons from, she was an esteemed teacher trainer, ballroom dancing teacher trainer. And she asked me if I'd consider letting her train me to teach and then she would give me work in her school. So this was all in parallel with having my Alexander lessons. So between the two ideas, I thought, well, if I'm training to be dancing teacher, I'll, well, I might also train to be an Alexander teacher. So I asked Mr. McDonald to put me on his waiting list. And there was a three year waiting list at the time. Wow, yeah, gosh, so so those were the days. I think they, they all had three year waiting lists at the time, carried and <laughs> everything. There were so few of them that um, you just had to wait your time. But as it turned out, I only had to wait a year. And I think being an Australian might have helped because there was only one other teacher in Australia at the time. And I had the money and the freedom to just give up the engineering work by then and go to afternoon classes with Patrick. I taught ballroom dancing in the morning, went to Alexander School in the afternoon, went back to teach ballroom dancing and the things you can do in your late 20s. Really. Yeah, no, that sounds so much fun, I'll tell you. Yeah, we've all had similar stories. Um, so then I stayed off, stayed in, had the three year training, 70, uh, started beginning of 76, finished at 70, end of 78, stayed on in London till 80, came back to Sydney towards the end of 1980. Um, and I was the only teacher in Sydney then. The other teacher had died, Alan Murray, and um, whom I'd actually never met, although I met his widow. And uh, so I, and then Dr. Barlow was coming over 
he was invited as the keynote speaker to a conference that was organised at the University of New South Wales by Dr. David Garlick. David Garlick had been to London, had lessons with um, Bill Barlow, very keen on the technique. And then uh, when I turned up, I was invited to join in at this conference, which was early 1981. So Dr. Barlow was very generous. He gave lots of sort of radio talks, interviews, lectures, and I tagged along with my newly printed business cards and got all the work. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so it was a great way to start, although it was too much work, really, um, for a beginner. I was not, I was enjoying it, but not coping with it, if you might say. <laughs> yeah. um, so I did that for a year, and then by then other teachers had started trickling back to Sydney who trained in London, and we got together and we started sort of working together in different ways. And it was it was good in one sense because I had companionship at that stage, but also I had been pretty much a McDonald teacher all the way through. And from my first lesson to my time I graduated, I'd never had any lesson with anybody else other than Mr. McDonald or Shoshana Kamenitz. So uh, when the other teachers started coming back to Australia in, in early 82, it uh, opened me up to other ways of looking at the work in ways that at that stage in London, you once started, tended to be sort of isolated within your own um, group. Mm. So through the 80s, um, I, I joined in with these other teachers, developed a practice, and we started a teacher training program in Sydney in 1985, and I worked on that two days a week. Other teachers came. Uh, we had a rotation system then, and it was just an experiment that STAT was allowing us because the local teachers had no insufficient training, insufficient experience to become teacher trainers. So we had a rotating system of directors who would come from London. And so that we learned a lot from those. Some of them mm -hmm. stayed, in fact. And then, um, so I was working on their training schools and then some of them, people went off and did their own training schools and I worked for them. And it got to a point in uh, 94, 1994, I gave myself a sabbatical back in London to just catch up on what was happening with teacher training with the idea that I might start my own school. Mm. So that turned out to be two years and I worked with Misha Magadoff's school uh, for a year, two days a week, uh, joined in conferences and talks and all those things that STAT was offering at the time and then came back, started my own school in 96. I did 11 years of that and... Um, and it was during that period that I started going back to university and I did some, I did a master's in adult education and that led to the doctorate that I did in doctorate of education, which I finished in 2007. And my topic being the uh, future of Alexander Technique teacher education. So, which was sort of a, a critique of the system really, and some recommendations as to how we might look, look for it in the future.